Good morning and welcome to my California native plant garden. Um, this is an update for February, monthly update for February. Uh, grass is green, things are greening up. Of course, most of this grass is invasive, uh, brought over by settlers as cattle feed, but there are some native plants out there as well. They're just kinda not the ones that you can see right now. It's a little early for wildflowers, but maybe we'll find a couple that are on their way. That would be exciting. Um, this is a busy time of year for me at work, so it's a little hard for me to get out here and do the weeding. Every year around this time, the weeds get out of control. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna kind of put a qualifier on uh, from the outset that I know um, this is this is this is probably not how you should manage your your garden, right? <laughs> you should be less busy than me. Okay, the light's a little different than it was earlier. I had to take a little bit of a break. Um, there is, appears to be some sort of a, uh, a, a something happening up there in the sky. We did just get two atmospheric rivers here in California and about three inches of rain, so. Doesn't sound like much for anybody who's not in California, but anybody in Central California knows that that is one third of our average annual rainfall in like two weeks. So that's pretty significant. Here are the hummingbird sages on year two, looking good in February. It looks like they're putting on some new growth. Um, although a couple of them here look like they got sat on, uh, but that's just because we had the house painted. And um, I think the house painters may have um, step down them, but that's okay. There's the yellow-eyed grass, that's year one. Um, not really doing much yet. Uh, blue elderberry, our blue elderberry plant, I thought was deciduous, um, but maybe they're not deciduous here because it hasn't even thought about dropping leaves this year and um, seems to be just kind of chugging right along. The Dara's Choice Sage, that's a year one plant. Um, that one is uh, not really doing anything just yet, but the good, the big news, the big news on that one is that it is not dead. Dara's Choice has died on me every year for three years, um, and this one hasn't yet. Here we have um, the, the narrow leaf milkweed. Has not uh, really started to pop yet. In fact, there's, they're not even poking out yet. There is our snowberry. Again, this area is the uh, plants that probably shouldn't be here area, uh, but that I personally love. So I put them in and they're probably gonna need to be caged forever so that the deer don't eat them. But uh, snowberry has finally started to drop its leaves. This one is deciduous, so it's gonna drop its leaves. And uh, this is so exciting. The Western Columbine has little leaves coming out. It's popping. I love Columbine so much. Western Columbine, uh, for those of you who are used to it as kind of a, um, you know, a garden plant with lots of different colors. Western Columbine grows wild here. It is bright red, like fire engine red. And um, when you find a stand of them growing out in the Sierra, it's um, it's just really, really breathtaking to see them all clustered together. So I'm so happy that this guy survived. Um, it did drop all of its leaves after I planted it and now it is leafing back out. So exciting. All right, and then coming over this way, Ribes aureum, golden currant, uh, dropped all of its leaves. This is a first year plant um, and it's uh, budding back out and there's leaves all along the stem. So I'm excited to see uh, what this guy is gonna look like this year. I hope it grows a lot. This is the one that I'm really, there's a, quite a few plants that I'm trying to grow to where they're tall enough that I can uncage them and then the deer won't be able to reach um, um, the crown of the plant so that we can have it and enjoy it without necessarily having a cage forever. But it's gonna take a few years to get there, if it ever even does. So uh, we'll just see how that goes. That's the radiant manzanita that I thought about pulling out. It almost feels kind of cruel to keep it because it is a ground cover ma manzanita, uh, which means that it's never gonna be tall enough that the deer won't be able to eat it. So it's basically just, um, it's life is living torture. And I apologize to you, radiant manzanita, but I didn't have it in my heart to pull you out and throw you away. So I guess this is just your lot in life. You'll be, you're just this big. This is just how big you are. 
Um, and then there's just poppies everywhere around this guy. I threw poppy seeds um, in the area by where I've already got plants primarily because that's where I have enough exposed soil for them to germinate and also some uh, irrigation. So later in the season when there's no water, um, hopefully we'll be able to keep some of the poppies blooming a little bit later into the summer next year. Over here, um, there's the coffee berry. It's looking great. It's definitely put on a little bit more uh, structure than, um, than it had previously. I think it's uh, one of the plants that kind of enjoys the cooler weather. Over here, I've got two purple sages. We'll just review both of those. Some of the sages are doing great. Well, I guess, I mean, all of the sages are doing okay but some of them are doing are, are in a time of year where they're putting on more growth than others. The purple sage, I think, prefers uh, to do most of its growing in the spring and summer, so it's really not doing much. We've got two of those right here. Here's purple sage, um, Salvia leucophylla, uh, Figueroa, and then up there, that Salvia leucophylla, Point Sale. Oh, 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 we might have some aphids. What's that? Looks like aphids to me. California buttonbush, uh, not doing anything yet. This is Ceanothus uh, Ray Hartman. Pretty happy in the cool weather. The leaves are, are thicker and bigger and fuller than they've been all year. And it's putting on a lot of new growth. So uh, excited to see that. And I hope this guy keeps going up. Come on, I need you to put on some height. This is Artemisia uh, californica. This is California sagebrush. Um, and uh, it's not really doing anything yet. Um, I think the sagebrushes prefer uh, the hotter temperatures and um, hopefully we'll get a lot more structure on these in the spring and summer. We still have buds, but no leaves on the California buckeye. I'm still holding out hope. I think it's gonna leaf back out this year. In fact, I think if I'm looking real close, I think there's even more little buds next to the other buds. So yeah, here, here's hoping that we get some growth on this one this year. There's that Salvia Point sale. Look at all of these guys. These are probably popcorn flower. I think that's popcorn flower, 95% sure. Okay, maybe 70% sure. So there are two sort of cornerstone uh, wildflowers that make up the vast majority of the wildflowers that dominate the spring season here. Popcorn flower, which are these little white flowers, and fiddle neck, which are these big bright yellow flowers that um, curl in this sort of scorpion or fiddle-like pattern. They're gonna make up the vast majority of wildflowers in this yard and in this entire area in about one to two months. I think, I think that might be fiddle neck and that might be popcorn flower. And then these guys, this is crane's bill. This is an invasive. Sometimes can look a little similar to a native uh, wildflower called uh, Phacelia. Um, in particular, we have like kind of a rusty Phacelia. I can't remember the exact name of it, but yeah, these ones, these ones are definitely, this is all some sort of a crane's bill, some sort of a wild invasive geranium. Heteromeles arbutifolia, putting on structure, which is exciting to see. Uh, it's continued to grow throughout the winter. Really excited about that. And there's a giant crane's bill at its base. This is big sagebrush, Artemisia tridentata. Over the past month, I think it's putting on more happy little structures. Uh, you can see the, the, three, the three points there. Uh, why it's called Tridentata. It's so cool looking. I love this stuff. It has a really, almost like a soapy aroma. Yeah, leaves are like super, super rubbery, like really drought tolerant leaves. Um, look at the size of this. Look at that. Sometimes you don't notice how much growth something is putting on, but uh, Really, this, this sagebrush has put on a lot of structure in the past year. This is going on its second year. I, I think I kind of got a little bit disheartened by how some of these, what I, what I can now tell, are 
flower stalks sort of died back and it made it look like it was um, not thriving. But, uh, but no, it was putting on structure that whole time. And I think, I think we need a few more of these personally. Oh, look, we've got, we've got a flower stalk on this guy. Hello, who are you? Hi, who are you? I think that's popcorn flower about to pop. Are you gonna be the first popcorn flower of the season? Is that what you are? Or are you a fiddle neck? I don't know. I love you either way. I'm pretty sure that's popcorn flower. It looks like a white flower. It's about to pop. Uh, here's the Western Azalea. I think it's gonna be okay. We'll know soon. Finally, I think this is the first time in a long time that I've shown the um, the buckwheat where it wasn't in bloom. We still have those rust colored blossoms from last year, uh, now just kind of dried up seed heads. Um, but yeah, look at how beautiful and lush this greenery is on this buckwheat. Can I uncage you? I don't know. Hmm. I still don't know what's going on with this one. It looks better than it has in quite some time, but it still doesn't look great. Maybe I'll uncage this one and see what it does. Okay, we're gonna uncage that one and see what happens. It's also nice to see them outside of the cage. Selvia brandigii, the brandigi sage. I really need it to put on some more growth down here so that it can fill out, because um, it is leggy. Here's some deer grass, looking great. Here's our uh, woolly sunflower, uh, which uh, I don't think is ever gonna be terribly happy uh, because it gets eaten down to the ground uh, every time it tries to put on some structure. The yarrow are doing okay. Uh, I don't, they're not getting eaten to death. This one is completely uh, surrounded. I'm interested in this little purple flower. I wonder if that's a native or what is that? I do have a deep love for the wild flowers that grow here natively. So some of the stuff that other people might treat as weeds, I am inclined to keep. This has bit me in the butt a few times in the past though, where I've left um, something because I was like, oh, I don't know what you are. What are you gonna grow up to be? <laughs> and then it turns out to be millet that was growing from bird seed, clearly, or Last year, even the Bermuda grass, since it was really my first year dealing with it, I didn't know what it was. And I was like, oh, what are you? Little little guy spreading here. <laughs> I was so naive. Um, <laughs> and then by the time I realized what it was, it was everywhere. Okay, what? where are these little purple flowers coming from? Calendrinia menziesii, red maids. It's actually in the Montiaceae or Pussypaw family, which you can you can see um, the way that it's structured here in this rosette. It is Pussypaw-like. This is my Salvia gracias that has done the best. It's got so much growth, and there's even new growth, I think, in the last month. But uh, there's definitely interesting little patterns forming here. This part seems to be doing well. We had a piece die off right in here. This part's doing well, and then here's whole, a whole chunk of it that looks funny. This is the um, Ceanothus uh, Skylark, I think, um, is the variety. And it wants to grow. It just keeps getting eaten. And you can see down here at the base. Oh, hey, who are you? It's like a box elder beetle or something. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely getting more robust, but it needs to, it needs a cage so that it can put on some height.
Look at how vigorous that Pentium and Pseudo Spectabilis is. It's huge. Look at how thick and plump these stocks are this year. I was worried last year because these guys, I put them in in December or January. I think I put them in in December and they just immediately went prostrate and started started going kind of horizontal, crawling across the ground and not going upright. That is not the case this year. These guys are very upright. There's a lot of structure. And um, I think they're gonna look stunning this year. That's a bush monkey flower, I think. One of the bright yellow ones. And here's a poppy that looks great. That one's coming coming along pretty, pretty well. Um, there's a bunch of poppies in this area. Then there's a Phacelia. That's a native um, native wildflower. These are apparently delicious though. Last year I had a really big Phacelia that was growing up there in the uh, Celestial Blue Sage. And that one um, got completely demolished. Somebody ate it um, pretty much completely, but not before it was blooming. I think what happens is they uh, can grow in the spring when there's lots of other food for the deer, and the other wild uh, wildlife to eat. But then when you get into uh, the early summer and all of the other food starts to go away, that's when they start to eat the stuff that maybe they're not the biggest fan of, but they will eat. So we'll see if this guy can make it until then. I think, I think these are all poppies. I threw a bunch of poppy seed down. I don't think I expected every single seed to germinate. It's kind of taken me off guard. I've never had that high of a germination rate with poppies. Look at them. They're everywhere. So <laughs> I don't know how many of them are going to make it to adulthood. If they all do, this is going to be kind of insane. And um, the poppies might kind of overwhelm some of the other stuff that I've planted potentially. Look at them all right there. That's all poppies. I'll just have a seat next to this guy. So this uh, Pensamon GMR white, it bloomed uh, pretty much from the moment we put it in. This one went in in about June of last year, so this is on about month eight or nine. And the cool thing it's doing right now is it's really filling out. Uh, last year it kind of just stayed roughly the same size that it was when we got it from the nursery, uh, but it kept blooming all through the summer. Now it's really, if you can see the size of it against my shoe there, it's getting a lot bigger. And when we got it, it looked more like one of those or that guy there. And it just kind of kept sending up little white blossoms. Um, but uh, yeah, this one this year is gonna be much fuller and hopefully gives us a much better show as a result. Uh, here is the Pensamon Catherine de la Mar. I think this one is blue, if I remember right. Um, and uh, it looks like it's been eaten. I don't know why this one is being eaten. The other Pensamon the pseudo spectabilis, the desert penstemon, that one certainly didn't get consumed like this. This one seems to be a little bit tastier. This one is finally putting on some structure. Uh, I could put this one in, well, I say finally, I mean, it's only been in for about three months maybe, um, but it didn't do anything for the first one or two months. This is the firecracker penstemon, penstemon atonii. And I think you might be one of the first ones to bloom potentially. That kind of looks like it might be a flower bud or something that wants to become a flower bud someday when it grows up. Here's uh, here's that native phlox that's been doing really good all year. Came out of a seed packet last year. Didn't really want to stop going. It just kept chugging for the whole year. Maybe I'll cut it back. This is uh, the Eleanor monkey flower. This one also went in in June. This was a replacement for something that didn't make it here last year. Um, so we're in about month eight or nine and it looks awesome. It looks like it's gonna give us like quite a show this year. So I'm really excited to see uh, what this guy looks like when it starts blooming. Last year it bloomed for quite a long time, even though it was a first year plant, just kind of, you know, right out of its nursery pot. Um, so this year I'm hoping for something spectacular. I should probably come out here and trim off these last year's um, seed heads. It's probably about time to do that for this guy. This is um, uh, the Celestial Blue Sage which they always do this. They look really leggy and spindly after they finish blooming. 
Um, and I'm wondering if they would be a little bit happier if I cut them back sooner um, so that they can get a little bit more structured. It looked really great last year. It's not looking great right now, but kind of like the purple sage, I don't think this is the season for it. I think this guy really prefers it, you know, really sunny, really warm, hot weather. But this is one of the most stunning uh, plants in the whole garden with one of the most spectacular bloom shows. I know it's hard to tell right now, but you can see from the seed heads that are there at the top. Uh, last year's show, even though it was a first year plant, this one is about uh, 14 or 15 months old at this particular moment. Um, but last year, even, you know, at month four or five, it was giving us a pretty incredible show. I really hope that this one likes it here and, and gives us, um, you know, something to write home about. Over here on my left, there's our white sages. They are not doing anything. They do not like it here right now. They're angry that it's so wet. Um, and they would prefer it if it would heat up a little bit already. Uh, so, sorry guys, you just have to survive for maybe two more months and then it's gonna be your time to shine. Here's our Monica Manzanita. Will I say it again? Will I say, I will say. <laughs> yeah, it needs a new cage, it needs a new cage. Uh, but yeah, lots of structure, love this guy. Um, the starlight looks great. Starlight is one of the first sages to bloom every year. You can see we've had, we've had an attack, everybody. This is a thing that happens when deer get into your garden. They do that. They like sit on your freaking plants. Man, look at that. Look at this. Man, that's such a bummer because look at how much how much growth this guy's putting on. This would have been really beautiful if the deer had not come through with their antlers and mutilated it. And now it's doing what the one on the top of the hill did, where the pieces that the deer knocked down are gonna continue to grow, but they're gonna creep along the ground and be a little weird. That's what happened. I guess life goes on. It's a murder scene. That was beautiful. That's one of the that's one of the plants that is happy right now, and um, and then that happened. Right behind it, there's the Pozo Blue Sage. Both of these, uh, a lot of these Cleveland variety sages do really well at this time of year uh, when you've got kind of high humidity and you know the temperatures aren't super high yet. But I feel like they're getting ready. They're like waiting for the temperature to go up and then they're gonna bloom like crazy. Same thing for this Winifred Gilman sage. This one's doing pretty good too. Look at how beautiful that is. So vibrant green, love it. I'm so bummed about that starlight. Out there, uh, there's our, um, there's a Brandigy sage. That one's doing really nice right now. In fact, it has buds and it's probably gonna be blooming pretty soon. Uh, and then over here, there's the Allen Chickering Sage. Same thing for that one. That one's really happy as well. And then over there, there's our like um, little non-native garden uh, with the Mexican Sage. And there's a, there is a Starlight Sage and there's a Chaparral Honeysuckle. Those are the natives in that area. All right, I feel like this has been a bit of a rambly video, but this is the garden that I put in in 2022, in December of 2022. It is now February of 2024, so we are 14 months in. Uh, the big uh, conversation to be had right now is not about blossoms, but about everybody putting on vegetative growth. A lot of leaves, like this monkey flower, putting on a lot of structure. Some of these sages in the Cleveland family are putting on a lot of structure. Um, and some of the things that are dormant are waking up a little bit. And also, I don't have enough time to weed. That's the story of the garden right now. Next month is when you're going to start to see quite a lot of blossoms, I think. Um, so it's a sleepy season, but it's not as sleepy as it was last month. There's vegetation happening all over the place. All right, should we pick a, should we pick a, pick a celebrity for the outro? I go with this penstemon. Look at this penstemon. This penstemon is absolutely stunning. Hey, buddy, you look great. Okay, so on that note, thanks for joining me for another update, for a monthly update. They will be more exciting starting next month for a few months. We're gonna have a few months of a lot of blossoms. 
Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to showing you some of those. All right, until then, I should probably say thanks for watching and subscribe and all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you next month. Okay, here, uh, uh, one more little update here. I am up here under my big oak tree, and this is the location of the Bull Thistle War of 2023. And just in case you ever thought it was over, it's never over.